65 million years ago, when the meteorite hit, 90% of all species disappeared, but they survived. And people are really fascinated by animals that have disappeared and become extinct and are only apparent in the fossil record. But I'm interested in these animals because they managed to survive, whereas most other things just completely disappeared. Phil is a scientist in New Zealand, and he is on his way to find a creature that has seen the dinosaurs come and go. They have survived almost unchanged for more than 200 million years. His journey stretches all the way across the islands of New Zealand to the only place on the planet where these creatures live. Phil is met by a group of scientists. Together they make their way deep into the forest. It's not easy getting to the location, but if they can find these animals, it will be worth their effort. An expert is on location. Ben Bell has been studying these creatures for over 30 years. And searching and a number of rocks, occasional rocks, so they can be very camouflaged. And you may not see it till it moves. I'm going to go and catch a dad now with babies on his back. Do we get a prize? Meet Archie. He's not just any frog. He's been given the grand title of the world's most extraordinary amphibian. Phil Bishop and the group of scientists are delighted. Archie's frog is a type of frog that we find in New Zealand and it's a very rare and endangered frog and let's just call him Archie for short. They've been hopping around at the feet of the dinosaurs these frogs. They're a really ancient species but he's a really weird sort of frog. He's got this beautiful coloration and unlike most frogs he doesn't try and hop away he just sits still and by sitting still you just can't see him he disappears into the background. They've got really weird breeding behavior what Archies do is that Dad looks after the eggs and he sits over the eggs for about two months just looking after the eggs and they eventually hatch into these tiny, tiny little froglets and they climb onto Dad's back and then he carries them around for another month on his back. Absolutely amazing stuff. But what's even weirder about Archie's frogs is the way they jump. Archie's frog haven't worked out how to land. So when they jump, they take off and then they just do this face dive into the dirt, which is, if it's nice and soft, that's okay, but you can imagine their horror when they come down and they smash their face into a rock or a log or something like that. They just don't put their hands out to stop them. It's quite weird. But Archie isn't the only peculiar member of his family. His cousins around the planet have also been around for millions of years, 500 times longer than human beings and they come in every conceivable shape and size. There are over 7,000 kinds of amphibians. Frogs have the strangest things. Some of them have little piggy eyes looking to straight together. Some have eyes on the side. And I've even worked with one that has a nipple poking out of its ears. They have little bits on their ears. Some have a long pointed nose that when they call it bobs up and down. So there's an amazing variety of amphibians when you look at the amphibian world. But what you might want to think is what use are they to us? And this is where it's really important, is that they are very sensitive barometers of the health of the environment. And if there aren't any frogs there, then we know that there's something wrong with the environment. 
And the big worry for amphibian biologists throughout the world is that all over, amphibians are starting to disappear. So it's quite likely that the amphibians are telling us that there's something seriously wrong with our environment. Just in the last 30 years, hundreds of frog species have disappeared from the face of the planet. They have managed to survive devastating extinctions in the past, but now they're simply running out of places to live. The main problem is that we're destroying their homes. So it's as simple as stop destroying their homes. If we look after the environment, the ponds and the waterways in which they live, then frogs will be able to look after themselves. And it is this simple message that Phil hoped to spread during Frog Week in New Zealand. With him travels seven of his little friends, including Freddy the Tree Frog, who's clearly a crowd favourite. Can anybody tell me what an amphibian is? Froggy salamanders. Why are they going to become extinct? Isn't it because human beings are destroying the habitats? Fantastic, well done. Frog Week is a celebration all about the fantastic fun that are involved with frogs. And for people to see frogs, that's the best part of the Frog Week, is looking at their expressions, looking at their excitement when they actually meet a frog face to face, some of them for the first time. Have you ever seen a live frog before this? I'm yeah. Here. Is this your first time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was amazing. The kids just love learning about frogs and they also really enjoy learning about Archie because of his peculiar life history and his jumping behaviour. They find it really great fun and Archie's become an ambassador for amphibian conservation and even at Auckland Zoo they've had a certain amount of success with trying to breed them in captivity because he's such a rare and wacky frog and this year when we were out in the field we found good numbers of Archie. They're totally fascinating and when you pick one up in your hand, it's just such an amazing creature. You've just got to make sure that they're around forever. So if we can just protect their homes, then it's quite an easy job just to protect frogs. And so hopefully, just if we can give Archie and his cousins just a little bit of a helping hand, then they'll be around for the next millennium.